Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions are a way to visualize how fast molecules probably are, depending on temperature, molecular mass, etc. Today, I'm going to focus on temperature, and here in blue, I've put a typical Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution for something that's cold. One of the temperatures teachers like to use is 100 Kelvin, which is actually like negative 170 Celsius. The point is it's cold. The idea being that at cold temperatures, molecules generally travel slowly. And so the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution is pushed more to the left the peak of it is more to the left when your x-axis is speed. What we are doing is plotting how probable it is that a particular molecule is traveling any particular speed. So to the left is slower speeds. I can write that down for you. And to the right is faster speeds. At cold temperatures, more of the molecules are traveling at slower temperatures although it isn't impossible for a couple of the molecules to be traveling at a fast speed. And so we say that the probability has a peak here at the low temperatures. Now, if we were to heat up the mixture, some of the molecules that are currently traveling slowly will travel quicker. There will still be some that travel quickly. Actually, there will be more that travel quickly at the higher temperatures. And there are probably fewer molecules traveling at the slower temperatures. Because as you heat up a mixture, the molecules travel faster. This is at least true in gases, okay? So what I'm going to do is draw another curve that looks the same, but it needs to be smushed vertically and stretched horizontally. But the area underneath this new curve is supposed to be about the same as it was for the original. What that means is that the peak moves to the right and down. I'm going to make it, say, about here. So I'm going to start at 0, 0, because there's, no pro there's a 0 probability that the molecule is not traveling at all. All molecules are in motion, at least in a gas. And so I'm going to try to create a curve that has its peak here. Again, it's the same as the blue, but smushed vertically and stretched horizontally. And then I need to have it come down as well. Now, what you'll notice on the far right here is that you get close to the x-axis, but you never actually hit it. And that's true for both of them. This is technically an asymptote. And I know it's impossible for the speed of a molecule to be like uh, uh, the speed of light or something. But the point is you get less and less probable to be traveling faster at any particular temperature. If I double the temperature, maybe uh, on average the speeds increase. Well, they will. And so it's more probable that more of them will be traveling at a higher speed. The peak is to the right. And then if we were to heat this up even more, we're going to move the peak of this curve maybe a little further to the right and down. Still start at zero, zero. You're still supposed to have what looks a bit like a hump graph here. And it peaks here and comes down. And you still have an asymptote. You're supposed to approach the x-axis, but not hit it. I'm going to call this 400k, which is admittedly very fast. Oh, well, it's 100 and 30 Celsius or something, higher than the temperature water boils at. The real point is that these are all the same curve, but with transformations applied. The blue curve, which has its peak higher and further to the left, is for colder temperatures. And as you warm the sample up, more of the molecules will be traveling at higher speeds. So you're spreading your molecules out across a wider variety of speeds. That's why the peak goes down or the peak probability goes down here. But it does move to the right, which represents a higher probability that your molecules are traveling at a higher speed. The higher the temperature goes, the further this curve moves to the right and down. I should say the peak moves right and down. The curve is still anchored here at zero, zero. If you were to create a version of this for an extra high temperature, you would continue moving. You would end up looking flatter. 
but the point is that the area under each of these curves is supposed to be about the same. This purple curve, we lost this chunk of the curve here, this area above the purple but below the blue. Where did those molecules go? The answer is they were transferred over here above the blue and below the purple. So you're trying to make those areas look about the same. Most teachers don't require it to be that accurate. The point is that the area under the curves is supposed to be the same at every temperature because your sample is staying the same. And actually, it's a probability density function. So the area underneath the, each of these curves, if you were to integrate it, is exactly 1. You know, all probabilities add to 1. If the calculus didn't make sense there, don't worry. The point is, here's your Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. At higher temperatures, you're more probably at a high speed. And at low temperatures, you're more probably at a low speed, on average. That's the way it goes. Thanks for being with me and best of luck.